Friends, Doc South here. I see, uh, well, we're getting pretty close to Halloween. Uh, well, gosh, not not that much longer and uh, the kids will be out. I, I guess kids still go out trick-or-treating, right? Of course, now they go, I guess, arm in arm with their parents and all, which is probably how it should be. Um, when, when I was a kid, um, <laughs> back in the 50s, basically we, we just... Uh, ran out the door with, uh, you know, pillowcases and to make our run uh, for all that, all, uh, for a great supply of, can- uh, basically a winter supply of candy. Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, we, yeah, I, I can remember mom screaming, you watch yourselves crossing the highway. Yes, ma. And, you know, we, my brother and I had a route planned. We'd go, oh my gosh, all over town. And then change costumes and do it again. And if we could get away with it, uh, change costumes and go again. Usually by then, people kind of got a little suspicious. Hey, you two, weren't you two uh, cowboys just a little while ago? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah. We, well, we wanted the darn candy for crying out loud. Chester was a great small town. Mo- most everybody pretty much knew everyone else. Uh, no one really that awful rich. There was a few rich people in town, but uh, and, and they were okay too, of course. Um, just a few more bucks in the wallet. Uh, but and, and us kids, my gosh, we were just, oh boy, Halloween was the best. It's, there was actually times we'd sit around and debate, what was better, Christmas or Halloween? Christmas always won, but Halloween had, had its advocates. Had its advocates. Yes, indeed. And I remember one of the coolest uh, things we'd go to on Halloween. Of course, mostly it was trick-or-treating. Knock, you know, put on your costume, go to the door, knock on the door. And uh, the older kids would be out, you know, soaping windows and, you know, doing their doing their thing. Uh, peeling up and down the street in their hot rods. But they also kind of kept an eye out for us kids. You know, you'd, have, uh, you'd be walking along... And they'd, uh, they'd holler, are you kids okay? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we're fine. We're getting candy and all. Okay, we'll uh, just watch. I hear there's pretty good candy up around the corner. You get over to Orchard Street over there. You'll be, yeah, Grove Street. Grove Street's a good one, too. Get on in there. Okay, I hear kids are doing all right. And, you know, we'd go, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, everybody was pretty nice. Um, and, but one, one, one spot we all had to hit. And we'd think about it, oh gosh, sometimes a week or two before, uh, before Halloween, we'd be, um, we, we, we'd be talking in class, recess, all that, uh, wherever we got a chance, walking to school, walking back, back home after school. Um, we'd be wondering what uh, Mrs. F- Mrs. Fry was going to do. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Fry, she was the wife of uh, the dentist in town. We only had one dentist. I know nowadays, I think there's, what, about 8,500 dentists in town, I think, in Chester. <clears throat> Somewhere around that, yeah. It, it, it's quite a few, anyway. I might be off on the count a little. Uh, and But there's quite a few dentists. At one time, one. And, and, and he had plenty of time to work in his garden. Yeah. <laughs> the... Uh, and then I remember, uh, well, I, I remember you'd go, you'd, you know, you'd go for a checkup and he'd send a note back to your, uh, to your mom saying you had 84 cavities or whatever. It seemed like 84. It probably, probably had 10. And you know, oh my God, every day now after every Friday after school, I'm going to have to go get another filling done. Oh my God. And I think he charged, I think he charged $10 a filling. It wasn't much by today's standards, okay. Uh, but, you know, 10 bucks was a lot of money back then. But if, while you're sitting in the office uh, and, you know, listening to the, uh, the agony going on in the next room, uh, the uh, uh, Doc Fry's wife, uh, Mrs. Fry, would uh, come out and talk with you. And she was a little tiny thing. Honestly, uh, well, I never saw her when she, when she was young, but I imagine when she was a younger woman, she could have been a jockey. Yeah, I, I think she was that, she was tiny, but she was always so nice. She'd come over and talk to you, you know, and, and the nice thing is that she talked to you like you were a grown up. you know, yeah, they had all these neat things to talk about with you and how school and, and then, you know, you might be talking about, uh, 
English class and said, what author are you? Uh, well, we're, we're reading something by Mark Twain right now. Oh, he's great. You've got to read his. You know, she, she knew her stuff. Very nice lady. But what she did was on Halloween, uh, you had to stop at you had to stop at Doc Fry's because she she set up she deck you know how people decorate the uh, the lawns and stuff okay well she did it she she decorated the lawn but she really turned Doc Fry's waiting room no the living room the living room into a a, a chamber of horrors it was fantastic you go you you'd knock on the door and the, she had I think she had a way where the door would open and creak open and she'd be and and the room would be dimly lit and there she'd be sitting behind a cauldron a foaming cauldron and and all sorts of ghouls and monsters all around the room things you could see she made by hand if i recall right this was the case and be all candle lit and jack-o-lanterns and oh and you had to you had to walk up to her and she'd uh, you know like a witch or a monster of some sort, and you had to dip into the into the um, into the candy cauldron, and you could grab whatever you wanted. You know there was all sorts of candy in there. It was fantastic, and you you know we oh man, and yeah if if you were if you were suitably impressed, you could do two handfuls. You know and the, oh you'd pour that into your pillowcase. No, we didn't use paper bags. God, they could rip. <laughs> No, pillowcases. We'd bring home pillowcases of candy. You know, 10, 15 pounds of chocolate bars. Uh, and 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 Mrs. Fry, oh, God, she just, I can still see her coming through the mist. The, I, somehow she had a, a fogging machine. I don't know how she did it, but she did. Maybe she got dry ice. I don't know. Put it in my, I don't know how she did it. But it, maybe, she, maybe she knew how to make a cauldron smoke. We always wondered. Gosh, could she actually be a witch? I don't know. God, she was very convincing. But she was, I know when the theater group came to town, she joined. <laughs> and she loved to be in the place. And, uh, and I thought very good at it. Very good at it indeed. But boy, that candy on Halloween at Doc Fry's place. Yes, sir, he Bob. And of course, you'd eat all that candy. And oh, about three or four weeks later, hey, my tooth don't feel so good. <laughs> May I don't think she was drumming up business. No, there was we, we ate plenty of candy anyway. Um, it, it it didn't matter. There was candy stores in town. We hit them. We hit them hard. Uh, but is she uh, she was such a swell lady, and I loved how she she would talk to a you know a ten year old like he was twenty five or thirty, like you were you know like you counted. Yeah, she was a good lady, good lady. Doc Fry, I liked him too. Actually, he was a pretty good dentist. Uh, yeah, it it no, it didn't tickle to go there. But again, this was, this was uh, kind of before the days of absolutely painless dentistry. It, it, but still, he hey got the work done. I had uh, I, I I I know he fixed many a tooth for me. Anyway, good family. I thought I'd say uh, again. Doc South signing off. I hope you uh, enjoyed. We'll see you later. Thank you and uh, God bless. <laughs>